Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be sharing some creative uses for the leads inbox. But in this video, I just want to cover the basics. So the leads inbox versus the deals pipeline and when you should be using the leads inbox or as a preview, if you should be using the leads inbox. To start, I'm going to tell you how the leads inbox and the deals pipeline differ. So the first is just the UI, how it looks. This is your deals pipeline. You have your stages. You can move deals across stages, so on and so forth. The leads inbox looks like this. It's just a list view. Now I can make my deals pipeline look the same way. Um, if I look at a list view and I just look at my new deals, you'll see this looks very similar to this, but most people are not using the deals pipeline this way and shouldn't be using the deals pipelines this way. So the leads inbox just looks a lot different than the deals pipeline, which can be a point of confusion for users. Next, what can you do with a deal versus a lead? So in a deal, if I get this open here, in a deal, you see I can take a note, create activities, do a call, email, have files attached, documents, and invoices. I can also mark the deal as won, or I can mark the deal as lost. On the contrary, with the leads inbox, if I open a lead here, I can take notes, I can create activities, and I can send emails. So I have more limited functions that I can do within a lead. And rather than marking a deal as one or a lead, excuse me, as one or lost, I have the options to either archive or convert to deal. So kind of again, something new to have to learn, I either have to convert this to a deal or I archive it. Archive is like lost, converting to deal is kind of like one. Now, somewhat related to that is insights. So your reporting. In your reporting for leads versus deals, same thing, you're more limited. So for leads, you have these two types of reports versus for deals, you have many more types of reports available to you. And similar to insights, uh, you have workflow automations and third party automations. While in workflow automation, so Pipedrive's native automation tool, you can do most of the same things. Um, you are much more limited as things are today with the automations that are available with third party tools like Zapier and Make. All right, I've just gone over a ton of reasons why the leads inbox is different than deals in your deals pipeline and how you're more limited in what you can do with leads. So you may be asking, should I be using the leads inbox? Great question. The answer is probably not. Generally, I do not recommend to my clients that they are using the leads inbox unless there's a very specific use case that they can explain to me for why they need it. So I'm gonna go over a few of those use cases that have come up. The first is that maybe when your lead comes in, you don't know which pipeline that lead should end up in. So let's say you're a home services company and you have a pipeline for new installations and you have a pipeline for service appointments. Then let's say that you have a lead magnet where you just collect the name and email for your prospects. Now, I would argue you should just add a question to that lead magnet so you know whether you should create the deal in the new installation or service appointment pipeline. But if that's not an option for you, this could be a case where you wanna create that opportunity as a lead because you have no idea just based off name and email if they need a whole new installation or if they were just on your website because they need a service appointment. So you would want someone on your team to reach out to that new lead, determine if they are a candidate for a new installation or service appointment. Once you have that information, that individual would convert the lead to a deal and put it in the right pipeline. The second reason you could use the leads inbox is if the majority of your opportunities are not qualified. So a couple of examples here could be you get a lot of spam opportunities, or maybe you're importing a cold call list where you know most of the opportunities are never going to be actual deals, uh, but you need that list in there for your sales team. These are absolutely legitimate reasons to use the lead inbox. I would argue that you can use a deal stage for the exact same purposes and you can omit certain pieces of the information from your data set. So for example, you can omit certain lost reasons from your deals count. You can also omit stages. So for example, if you're doing a conversion report and you want to just omit the first stage entirely, you can do that. But if you want to use the leads inbox in that case, totally legitimate reason, uh, and I support you in that decision. 
The third reason I've had come up for using the lead inbox is super, super specific. Uh, but I had a client where they didn't control all of their lead sources. One of their lead sources they were getting from a third party, um, and let's say they were getting 10 of those leads per day. In eight of the cases, they already had a deal representing that opportunity. So the person who had reached out through the third party found the exact company's website and completed their web form. So in eight of the cases, there was already a deal that had been created through automation that we had set up, uh, but they didn't want to miss those you know, two leads that hadn't had a deal created. But we were limited in the information that we got from that third party source about the deal. So we weren't able to, through automation, um, know if the deal existed or not. So in that case, we created leads for all of the 10 opportunities and activity for their sales rep to check if the deal existed. If it did, there were instructions for them to archive the lead. Um, and if it did not, then there were instructions for them to convert that lead into a deal so that they weren't missing that subset of opportunities, but they also weren't getting loads of duplicates in their system. So there are definitely reasons why you may want to use the leads inbox, but if you're not using it and we're just curious, wondering like, is this something that I should be using? No, <laughs> if you're not using it and your process is going great, perfect. Don't change anything. If it's not broken, don't fix it. The leads inbox can be great for very specific use cases where the deals pipeline is not serving exactly what you need. Uh, but if you haven't run into any issues with the deals pipeline, there's no reason you need to use the leads inbox. It's just one more thing for your team to learn, one more place to have to set up metrics, and one more possible way for things to slip through the cracks. So leads inbox, great if you need it. But if you don't, if you can't make the case for why it is going to make your process better, don't use it.